Hey everyone, Daniel Ramsey here with My Outdesk. I'm super excited because every once in a while, we get to bring really cool technology and really cool people on our show today and share with the world. Now, this particular platform is brand new. It's been around for a while, but it's, it's quietly, secretly dominating their little niche in the real estate technology space. And so we have today Shane Stanfield here Thanks for joining us, Shane. I'm really excited to talk about Raven.re. Yeah, definitely. We're excited to tell you about it and the rest of the audience. Yeah, and so if you're here listening right now, just let us know where you're from. We already have Lenny here. He's, he's from Manhattan Beach. He's always here and he's always sunny, dude. How you doing, buddy? Um, and, and I'm excited because we're going to just kind of get really, uh, you know, we're going to dive deep in what Shane's got going on, plus his backstory like where he comes from. Uh, he's worked for one of the top producing teams in the, in basically in the world. And because of that experience, he built his own platform. And as you know, you know, that's exactly how Shane, I don't know if you know this story, but that's how my outest was born. I'm a real estate broker. I love, I still stop at every open house in my neighborhood. I'm crazy. I, it drives my wife and kids <laughs> crazy. Right. So yes. the best vendors in the real estate space are people like Shane. So I'm, I'm really glad you're here and uh, let's just dive in real quick. If you're, if you're here and with us, just in the notes, tell us where you are and uh, what the weather's like, because we, we love to like just see where our audience is coming. Shane, how did you get started in real estate? Let's start there. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I got started in real estate um, quite a while ago. I guess, you know, other veterans in the industry definitely have me beat, but uh, my background's in mechanical engineering, Went through design, build, construction for seven years, got promoted uh, project manager, project engineer, business manager, what have you. I did see that uh, the real estate industry was ripe for, uh, I don't want to say disruption, but some changes potentially. Um, yes. So I got my MBA and um, actually found my uncle, um, out of all people, who is a top producing real estate agent. Um, and he's been in Orange County for since the 90s, uh, selling real estate and um spoke with him and spoke uh, with a few other commercial real estate agents and ultimately decided to get into the residential real estate space about six years ago. Um, just nice. knowing that there, um, there are opportunities um, for technology and uh, you know, started from scratch. Um, I learned the business um, from Sean and the Stanfield real estate team, as well as Sotheby's international realty. So there's an amazing yep. network of agents uh, within that brand. Um, also Coldwell Banker and Keller Williams and Berkshire Hathaway kind of gathered a collective knowledge of a lot of agents in the industry. And um, we struggled quite a bit with CRMs and, and everything else. So, you know, at the end of the day, we, we built our own platform and I decided to stop selling real estate and focus 100% on building technology for real estate agents. So yeah, that's, that's a quick, that's quick story. But what's crazy about your story is you're an engineer by trade. Which is, which is really cool. So your mind doesn't work like us crazy real estate brokers. You're, you're actually linear in your thinking, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of probably giving you an advantage in, in this real estate game, yeah? Well, yeah, I wouldn't call it linear, but uh, you know, I think that there's definitely you know, some of the mechanical engineering um, at work um, just by you know, the process and looking at first principles and you know, what do agents actually do, uh, what is productive work versus unproductive work, and how um, they structure their day. Um, and you know, it's usually 20% of the activities that produce 80% of the results. And right. um, we've, I found a lot of agents, you know, they might be using a CRM, they might be using something, but if they're not getting closer to getting a deal done or getting a commission check, then it's not necessarily a productive use of time. And um, more and often I've found that even the technologies that are built in today's day and age don't inspire the best behavior. Um, you can automate and you can send emails and all the do all do all the template stuff and think that you yeah. might be getting closer to a listing. But in reality, if you're not out there talking to people, building relationships, talking with homeowners or your network or potential buyers, then, you know, it's, it's really about the relationships. So, so your platform helps I, real estate people identify the most productive behaviors and focus on that is, is, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, we do believe that real estate's about relationships and it'll always be that way. Uh, and yep. I mentioned a little bit earlier before we went live that, 
it's a highly emotional decision making process for sure. the buyer and then also for you know you know the the agent and the homeowner so ai can only do so much you know you can right. you can build the algorithms you can kind of show the zestimates and all these other things but at the end of the day it's a hyper local marketplace and it's a hyper emotional market so uh, well, my question for you, though, is that is that different because you focused on kind of the luxury? Sotheby's is known as a luxury broker and and, you know, it's, you know, millions of dollars. But is that is it, you, do you hold that belief for like the track home in Phoenix, Arizona that that sells? I think it's a lot different. Yeah, you know, definitely the, the luxury market um, selling a $10 million home or $5 million home is a lot different than selling a 500,000 yeah. or 250,000 dollar home. So um, yeah, it's really different. And, you know, with the, the new iBuyers um, coming in, which is more of a new version of home flipping and, you know, right. trying to make a profit on, on the fees that they, they uh, distribute and, and uh, require uh, buyers to pay for um, at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's a similar business model than, you know, what the back in the day in the 90s, you know, if I can't sell your home in 30 days, then I'll buy it. You know, right. it seems just a new version of that. But, uh, but yeah, so some of those um, more track home markets, um, that are willing to sell at a convenience, you know, sacrificing cost for convenience. Um, that's mm -hmm. definitely going to happen. Um, so it really depends um, on the local marketplace and all that, I guess. I love it. So tell us a little bit about Raven. Like it, it's, a, it's a matching service for buyers and sellers, but how, mm -hmm. you, just give us the kind of the, the high level explanation and then we'll dive into the details a little. Yeah, for sure. So. The high level is, you know, going back to first principles, you know, the definition of a real estate broker is to connect a buyer and a seller yep. um, to broker that deal. Um, so what Raven does is we help agents connect buyers and sellers through a network of agents for both mm -hmm. on-market properties and off-market pre-market properties. So the markets, the, the off-market listings, the pocket listings, the coming soon listings, all of that gets mm -hmm. baked into the Raven platform where agents can actually input their coming soon listings and their buyer needs. And we match up the criteria for all the agents within the network against all of their respective buyers and sellers. So think of it kind of like a match.com for real estate agents, buyers and sellers, um, mm -hmm. where the matching algorithm helps agents connect their respective clients together. And the baby is the beautiful home that they're trying to sell. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. Well, it's interesting because um, there's a huge percentage of, you know, luxury and, and even nice homes that, you know, you go, this is the, the current model. And just, if you're listening, this is, this is why I think it's important for brokers. And if you're an agent in an office to really consider using a platform like, like yours and actually yours, but most of the time you have a nice house you want to sell, you go to the office meeting and like a third of the people show up and you're the first one to go, Hey, I have this beautiful home and this is what yeah. it's all about. And then you give out flyers and then the insurance broker comes up after you or some, some version of that. Right. So exactly. you, you saw that I'm sure in, in the Stanfield, Stanfield real estate group and you're like, there's got to be a better way. Right. Yeah. And we still get these brokerage wide, you know, emails and, you know, internal postings. I'm a part of several Facebook groups that I see, you know, all these new buyer needs and seller, you know, yeah. upcoming listings and things like that. So there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of uh, people, you know, voicing what they have and their needs and wants. Um, but mm -hmm. there's not a lot of people trying to connect the dots actively. And what we found right. it through a lot of the office meetings is that there might be 30, 40, 50 agents in the office meeting whether it be a Keller Williams or Berkshire Hathaway or, you know, Sotheby's International, a lot of people have a similar structure where they go around to each agent or they say, any new listings coming up, any new buyers, uh, any buyer needs. And if the agents are actually listening and if they're actually there, um, maybe they can connect the dots and try and find maybe. a potential deal, right? Um, that's not if they're on Facebook on their phone or distracted or, you know, they, they just don't think that they have actual buyer for that new upcoming listing when in reality, maybe they do, they have a large database. Um, so what we've done is we've been able to automate that whole process, change the office meeting structure um, to this new 
type of matching algorithm. So they're talking about matches and then agents are actually communicating at that office meeting about the matches they've made um, rather than just trying to um, put their plugs and wants into thin air to disappear. So Right. You guys have a national network and yet most of your matching happens on the local level. Um, and how does that logic work in your technology? Like if I'm a guy in New York and you're a guy in San Francisco, how do we match, you know, a deal? Yeah. Just- so it is, um, a lot of it is agents connecting buyers and sellers through local marketplaces. So if you yeah. imagine a group of agents in San Diego, um, they all work and they all have potential buyers and sellers for that specific area. Um, but there's also agents from outside the area who have clients coming in or moving. Um, so the referral network is, is pretty strong as well. So um, it is a hyper-local marketplace, um, but if a buyer is moving from one place to another and purchasing in a new marketplace, um, that it does, it does help that, that process as well. So, um, and is it company yeah. specific? Like if, if I work for Berkshire and you're with, you know, somebody else. And I mean, how does that sharing happen? Right. Yeah. Good question. So it's actually, it's brokerage agnostic, meaning anybody who has a license and is allowed to legally transact real estate in the respective yeah. state or states that they're in um, can join Raven and use Raven as a platform. So we have several of the major brands already using the, the platform. So we're, we're a brokerage agnostic solution. Um, one of the things that we found is, you know, some of the brokerages have a technology or a private uh, messaging system for their own internal use, but it's not yep. open to the rest of the brokerages. Got it. Got it. And, and, and your product, you prefer everybody to be open sharing um, yeah. versus in a silo based on my brand versus their brand. Exactly. Yeah. So if I, if, if a listing uh, pops up with another agent and I have a perfect buyer for it, you know, the co-opetition landscape that exists today, we want to, to mirror that. So, yeah. What, and why, um, why is that important to you guys? Like what, what do you fundamentally believe about the real estate space that makes that important? I think that um, the way that real estate is transacting today is across brokerages, across platforms, you know, uh, making sure that agents can identify buyers and sellers. Um, yep. Right now, there's a lot of agents who kind of just put it up on the MLS and hopefully it gets syndicated out to Zillow and then hopefully they get a phone call. Um, you know, so there's there's not a lot of active collaboration happening. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, buyers come from all over the world now. We have a global marketplace and um, people might be moving overseas and um, we want to make sure that that broker who's representing that buyer can connect with the whole network of listing agents here as well. So it makes sense. we want to keep it open. Yeah. And maybe keep it in house versus letting a tech company from New York, for instance, gobble up your commissions. Maybe you can keep some of the commissions in your pocket. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So Raven, we don't charge any referral fee. We don't charge any actual subscription fee. It's absolutely free to get on to the platform um, wow. and use. So unlimited matching, you can put in all your buyers all your buyer needs and all your upcoming and coming soon listings. And we're actually coming out with a release this week um, where it'll auto- automatically actively sync your active listings um, to oh, cool. your account. So if you are a part of you know, Southern California or another MLS um, that we syndicate to, uh, as soon as you sign up and you put in your MLS ID, we'll actively sync um, all of your active listings in there too. So people are kind of, can kind of see what everybody's got in terms of current inventory um you mentioned it was free to sign up why um why that price tag i'm just kind of (laughs) curious you know that's a tough revenue model if if you ask me yeah so the marketplace it's difficult to establish a marketplace if it's not free right so how many people are going to sign up even if it's you know twenty dollars a month um you know not many there's been other applications where they've had accounts at brokerages and they, their definition of success is to get 5% of the agents <laughs> using their CRM, which right. is mind blowing to me. And it's like, why, why isn't success a hundred percent of the mm. agents? How, how can we get all of the agents in your brokerage to use this platform? And, and that's where we came up with um, the free model. Um, and a lot of apps you see nowadays, you know, you get the free, you kind of have a limited 
uh, version of it, and then you can actually upgrade um, to something that costs money. Um, so yeah. that's what we're, we're doing. We're building out additional features and additional um, exciting things like a buyer portal where agents can collaborate with their potential buyers um, through a home search that includes both on and off market properties and they could mark them as interested or not interested. Um, mm. So it's a little bit more of a collaborative portal. Um, so we would, we're going to be charging for that as that rolls out um, towards the end of this year. Um, but we're always going to have that free version, free basic version uh, for agents to join. Is that going to be like an IDX feed kind of um, buyer website portal? Yeah, so it's similar to like an MLS portal, um, right. but you know the client doesn't have to download and install an app. They don't have to log in. Um, it's we're trying to make it as easy as possible for both the agent and for the buyer. Right. So one 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 interesting place. I mean, I was wondering, do you think like Zillow and these other uh, platforms are going to be forcing agents out of of business, and this is your battle to keep? agents in or like what's your perspective around that yeah i mean that's the ultimate question right i think that you know there's a lot of agents who like zillow and they mm -hmm. use the premier agent um, platform and they spend money and they get a good roi um there's agents who have a love-hate relationship with the the leads that come in you know if you can pick right. the the two percent of those leads that are actually um willing to transact ready to transact you know sometimes it is a numbers game as always Yep. Um, but you never know, I, you know, it's, it's really hard to say, you know, with the pivot to the iBuyer model, I know that they are using commissioned agents right now, um, but I'm not sure, you know, what the future holds for that. So if, you know, they've bought a mortgage, they bought a mortgage company, um, they haven't bought a real estate company um, just yet, but, you know, Redfin is actively out there as a um, lower commission brokerage, you know, online disruptor with you know, low fees and discounts and things like that. So that's really what we want to uh, stand up against is the, the people who are trying to take away from the agent's um, commission. And we, we do believe that the agents um, do deserve what they get paid. And we think that um, they potentially should get paid more on certain transactions if they can do a good job. So I love that. I love that. One of um, you mentioned the Zillow thing and one of our clients is actually a Zillow uh, like I forget what they, they call them, a Z local Zillow agent, and they're representing all the iBuyers. And what's really crazy about that is she called in, I don't know, maybe a month ago, and I got a chance to just kind of chat with her. And there's oh, still, yeah. yeah, and it's there's still a ton of real estate broker work that's being done on these other platforms, whether it's Redfin or or iBuyer or any of the other um, platforms out there. And she, she was actually so busy um, that she hired a couple of our virtual assistants to help her kind of get over the hump of, of all the things that she had to do to make transactions go. And so if you're, if you're listening right now, that's how Shane and I got connected is your uncle uses our, our company and we have some virtual assistants in your office, which is super cool. Um, oh yeah. I think, um, the, the first one we, we hired what, that is part of the Stanfield team that Sean runs, uh, four or five years ago. So yeah. still, you know, kick in, you know, essential employee. Like if they're gone, we start crying. Like if they did not exist, like it's, they're really that critical to, to the business. So tell us what do they do for the Stanford field real estate group? Um, a lot of it is on the administrative side, but you know, ensuring quality. So quality in syndication, quality and in information that's out there. Um, updating all those third-party websites, just checking, providing reports to clients on a weekly yeah. basis. Um, so some of the administrative uh, work that we actually used to have a listing manager do, um, and we hired her and she was kind of a full-time thing and she wanted to get into actually selling real estate and get out of this yeah. administrative work. And we actually said, hey, we can actually uh, put this into a process and train a virtual assistant to do this for you. And that way it frees up more of your time to sell. And that's really yes. what agents want to focus on is, you know, achieving their goals, succeeding in, you know, closing more deals, focusing on the stuff they're good at, negotiating offers instead of, oh, let me put this in the MLS and syndicate and make sure everything's updated and make sure that it's correct on Zillow and these third party websites. So the homeowner doesn't yell at me, you know, right. things like that. <laughs> so. I love it. I love it. Basically, like you said earlier, that 80% that doesn't generate revenue, that's what we do for some of the largest teams across the, the country. 
Right. Yeah. And they're very well trained and they know what they're doing and they come on board already having a background in real estate, spreadsheets, Google sheets, and you know, all these things. So you don't have to train them from scratch. You know, you have to, they have to understand your business model and how everything operates, but you know, it's not like you're hiring somebody off of the streets. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're listening right now, and if you wanted to find out more about my app desk, we actually have a text code. So if you, if you text SVP scale with virtual professionals, I actually wrote a book about this, how to put things into a system and process and help you get leverage for real estate people. So you can text 31996. Um, you can text SVP and then you'll get a copy of our book for free. And it's crazy because it's like 12 years of my heart and soul, Shane, that I poured into it after serving 5,000 people just like you and your uncle. So I, I, I'm really excited about it. If you haven't gotten it yet, definitely check it out. Um, Shane, what caused you to jump into this tech space, the real estate tech space? Like what was the impetus for making this move for Raven? Yeah, I think that it was um, solving um, some of our own problems that we had internally, you know, some of yep. the unmet needs, um, if you will, of real estate agents day to day. And um, similar to how my outdesk, you know, created this system, um, you, you actually learned and you said, this is actually required to run an efficient business. Um, yeah. So we went through all the different technology platforms. We spent years and years and hundreds of thousands of dollars with certain platforms that Wow. Why did that, we having to just say, Hey, you know what? Like we put so much technical debt into this thing, but we just need a clean slate. Um, so eventually we got to, you know, a third iteration of the product and we said, let's, let's do it for real this time, you know, start a new company. I I've haven't been selling for last almost two years now. So it's been wow. a full focus of mine. Um, we have a great technology team um, in place. So we hired a CTO as a full stack developer and all that. So um, it really um, helps the efficiency in terms of the overall transactions. So, and are you yeah, guys, a, in, in addition to the network, are you guys a CRM or is there, and, and I understand you're going to do an IDX kind of add on at some point too, but what are all the features and reasons people should check you guys out? Yeah, I think that it could easily integrate into the day-to-day -day business of a real estate agent. So regardless of what CRM they have or what other pieces of lead generation um, they're actually using, Raven can actually work with um, all of those platforms. Um, yep. So it's, yep. it's meant to be um, a technology for your active in-market buyers and your in-market potential sellers. So, you know, the cold leads and all the lead gen and, you know, the PPC and AdWords and all that. That's great, um, but we want to make sure that there's actual buyers and sellers in the system, um, and that way the matching algorithm can actually work and connect. So we're, we're generating hundreds and hundreds of matches every single day between agents, and um, agents that just sign on and register, they're actually seeing matches happen within the first few seconds of putting in either oh, wow. a buyer need or an upcoming listing, and you can actually upload photos um, from your mobile phone um, into the Raven application, and then one big thing about the sharing of it is that we want to make sure that the agent, the listing agent is empowered with the information and it's not shared until they authorize to do so. So it's not right. like a third party website where once you put it on there, it's out there and everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. It's actually very private. Um, so when you do put a pre-market listing into the Raven application, um, hopefully you do have something in writing, um, but you actually get the matches notifications first before any of the other agents know about your listing. So you can see, um, you know, hey, Joe actually from Keller Williams has a 98% matching buyer for my listing. Do I want to share this information with Joe or not? And you can decide <laughs> there before Joe even knows about it. And so. Joe, is, is Joe the real deal or not? Like, can we trust <laughs> Joe? Hey, real quick, um, we had a question from Facebook, which I love. Why is it called Raven? It's a good question. Um, it actually... Our, our CFO came up with the name and I think that, you know, we were trying to come up with something that is very simple, um, yep. easy to remember, um, didn't really want to have, you know, a real estate spin to it. You know, there's a lot of other companies that have real something in the name and we just thought that, hey, you know, what, what can we put out there that's new, that's exciting, that is a recognizable potential name of something else mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that we could use. Um, and so one word, you know, trying to keep it simple. And, uh, you know, the word spreads when, uh, when people start seeing the matches happen. Um, so they're like, oh, have you heard of Raven? 
and um, it's you know starting to starting to take take hold um, instead of some other names that might be you know real estate solutions rs.com or you know <laughs> who's going to remember that like you know so yeah. anyway so you raven so do no, you have no. a do you have a raven as your mascot <laughs> we should no yeah we we do not have any uh i i wish there was a better story behind it but yeah that's that's, that's you're gonna need a bird to get a raven yeah <laughs> yeah we, we're gonna need a bird um okay uh i wonder in a listing presentation let's say i'm a listing agent broker um and that's where all the money is if you're listening and and you're not that's that's where the money is when you control the listing you control your destiny you control the buyers i love being i love taking listings Right. So yeah. how do I use Raven to position myself to be more attractive to sellers? I mean, and, and yeah. do you have anybody that's using your platform right now to juice their value proposition when they're in a, in a presentation? Yeah, for sure. So we run um, trainings and webinars as well. So if anybody wants to sign up for Raven, they'll be notified of um, some of our training and some of the mm -hmm. scripts that we actually have. So we do have a full um, list of prospect prospecting scripts. Um, for sellers in particular, if you are calling for sale by owners, if you're calling expireds, if you're calling non-owner occupieds or any of those potential homeowners who are looking to sell, um, you could talk to them about the Raven platform. Hey, by the way, there's over 500 potential buyers in the system that I have. If I can work with you, then we can potentially find a match in the system. Um, and mm -hmm you do have the leverage of the network when you're talking to homeowners. And even if it's a door knocking thing, you want to find out from a lot of the homeowners, they might have a number in mind. You never know. Um, right. So what we're, what we're seeing um, agents do at open houses um, is that, you know, buyers walk in and they may or may not be interested in the property that they're walking around, but they've, they've seen everything online. They know all the details. They could, they've seen yeah. everything else for sale. They've got the Zillow or Redfin or Realtor app on their phone. They're like, okay, don't bother me, Mr. Realtor. Um, but what agents are doing now is they're saying, hey, we actually have access to this pre-market coming soon off-market network of properties. And there's thousands of them in the system. If you're really interested in buying, uh, we might be able to find something for you, pre-market, off-market. Would you be interested if something could be a good fit? Um, mm -hmm. And you know, they get their information, they get their criteria. And the more information, the better. So if you got square footage, bedroom, bathroom, price point, any keywords, ocean view, open floor plan, modern, whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, put them into the system and you can get matched up. You could find a perfect match off market for that buyer. And it um, doesn't mean you have to sell them something off market, but it helps you with a conversation to convert. Um, so they would capture five to 10 new buyers at an open house. And then the very next day, go door knock that whole farm area. Oh, by the way, I have five, people looking in this neighborhood to purchase just curious right. you know, what's your number you got a number you're gonna stay here forever okay that's fine you know but a lot of people they they'll tell you why or what their plans are for their property if it's one year six months five years and what that number potentially would be that's funny because it gives you an actual uh, a real buyer in a neighborhood versus a fake buyer, which a lot of agents, yeah. you know, you, they walk yeah. up like, I know someone. And, you know, everybody's like, he doesn't know someone, you know, <laughs> at least yeah. your platform could actually get them somebody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you never know. There's a lot of people who ended up connecting that have been working together in the same office for years and they, they put in their respective buyers and sellers and all of a sudden they got, they got two matches. They're like, yeah. We've known each other for how long? And we didn't even know we had a mutual deal together or multiple mutual deals together. And right. um, it, it goes outside of the office as well. It goes across brokerages and it goes across, you know, any geographic region, really. If you can find a matching buyer with a matching seller, it's, it's really the powerful, uh, the, the network that makes it more powerful that agents can talk about to get more listings. So we're not encouraging them to sell, you know, the off market deal, but it could be just a good conversation starter for people who really want to get more listings and get that listing contract signed, get in the MLS, get it sold. Well, you know, one of the weird, and, and if, if, you're, if you're listening right now, this popped up at me because, you know, I've been a broker for almost, seven, I think it's 17 years, if you can believe that, right? And recently they changed some of the rules in my local association where when you get a listing, you are forced to, within seven days of the actual executed thing, put it into 
MLS and and like there's a whole bunch of new rules which I hate right. by the way. I'm, yeah. I'm, my, my daughter's like, Dad, you break all the rules. I'm like, I know it's crazy. <laughs> um, so, um, how do you get around and like how do you are is this a marketing platform and are they technically supposed to put it in MLS when they put it into Raven? Like, what's the rules and you know all that? Yeah. So. Um, I guess the typical engineering answer is that it depends. Um, but yeah. it, it does because there, there's, there's different um, rules and regulations for all the different regions. Um, like uh -huh. you said, you, know, you have your own local rules and regulations. And yes. uh, where San Diego and Orange County and LA, they all have different MLSs and they all have their own requirements. So still need to comply with, with everything that's um, set out in rules. those documents. All yeah, the yeah. rules, everything in writing. If it's the seller exclusion from the MLS form, um, exclusive listing contract signed, um, right. whatever documentation you need to provide as an agent, we don't know that, but you do as the trusted professional. Um, so that's that's kind of nothing's changed in the day-to-day -day compliance requirements, um, but this is just a tool to to help the agents, um, and uh, ultimately it's up to to them to decide what they what they need to do. Right. Do you have your sellers acknowledge that they're going to go into this platform prior to being listed on MLS? Do you kind of like share the concept around what the network is? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of agents are explaining to what, you know, what Raven is and how it works. Um, we actually have listing uh, documents and uh, we can send that out after the, the webinar today, but um, yeah. it's to help through the, the listing presentation itself um, to explain mm -hmm. with the homeowner like what Raven is and what the network is, and um, they can decide either to, to go with it or not. Um, but either way, yeah, it's, it's something that definitely should be communicated to the homeowner and to the buyer um, of you know what the platform is and how it works and make sure that you have the right documentation in place for that according to your local rules and regulations. <laughs> Paperwork, <laughs> so. man. Paperwork. One of the very first things I had a virtual assistant do for me was all of the paperwork, all of the MLS compliance crap. I, that, that part of my business, I was like, I need help. And uh, so I absolutely, that's, that's, that's the thing that virtual assistants cool. excel at is doing all that process stuff. Um, Shane, let's, uh, let's talk, let's wrap up. We're almost done. I, I really appreciate your time here. Um, I thank you audience for being with us today. This is a free platform basically to juice referral deals and, and to keep real estate people relevant. So Shane, l l talk to me about the big vision. Like when you, when you first conceived of this and even today, where do you see this platform going and how do you see it really kind of helping the industry or transforming the industry, you know, five, 10 years from now? Yeah, I think that, you know, having a national network um, is important for real estate agents and having a global network is also important for real estate agents. So, you know, real estate is done differently overseas, you know, whether you're in the EU or you're in Australia or New Zealand or yep. Hong Kong. Um, but at the end of the day, there is a buyer and there is a seller. And we want to be able to have make sure that the agents in the middle um, of that transaction um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, so yeah, we want it to be the go-to marketplace for, for real estate agents to represent their clients to their highest and best ability. By leveraging if, technology. By le and you added that on <laughs> as an engineer right at the end, right? right, right by right. leveraging technology. Well, I think it's smart because like, again, I hate those meetings where, you know, five people show up, you know, to share listings and they spend 20 minutes talking about a listing that I don't have a buyer for or, right. you know, that I'm not really interested in hearing about, you know, and, and uh, I think your technology can save a lot of time and maybe even potentially create a lot of commissions for real estate people. So Shane, if somebody wanted to go deeper with you or learn more, how would they do that and where would they go? Yeah, so there was a link that was just posted in the chat. Um, if you go to raven.re for real yeah. estate, so instead of .com, just .re, and you can book a demo with us right through the website. Um, mm -hmm. So Carla is Calendly completely available. Um, she does get busy from time to time, but if you're interested in having a one-on-one, -on -one, we could schedule that at your convenience. You can choose a time right through the, the website. And you can also download the app within the app store. So we, both, we have it in both iOS and Android. If you search okay. for Raven Real Estate, all three words, um, and you can download the app from the website as well. 
um, you can sign up for free and uh, get started with it. But um, and get get feedback over to us. We'd love to hear what you think, uh, what can be improved, what you like, what you don't like. Maybe uh, hopefully you like it, and uh, hopefully it helps the agents who are on this call close more deals. Uh, we're seeing that happen automatically, um, uh, immediately, almost within the first 20 minutes of agents putting in their buyer needs and sellers, uh, matching with themselves, and then also matching with other agents in the network. So we hope that agents close more deals with it and um, you know achieve their goals with it. So Yeah, I love it. Shane, I love it. Hey guys, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate you. I know how valuable your time is. If you wanted to find out more information about this product, raven.re is a place to go. Shane, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate you guys. Um, again, Daniel Ramsey with My Outdesk. Go to our website, myoutdesk.com, get a consultation. If you'd like a copy of the book, text SVP to 31996. And uh, dude, Shane, like I, I think this thing's gonna blow up. Your price tag is right. <laughs> right? Yeah, we, we found that a lot of people like free. So why not try it out? All right, man. Thanks for your time today. All right. Thank you.